Hey guys, it's Landon with Redefined Horizons, and in this video, we are going to take a look at some GLO Township Plats, General Land Office Township Plats. They are the primary map produced as part of the public land survey system. Uh, so they are like, yeah, they're a little bit of a, of a like a cross between a record survey map and a tax assessor map, kind of. So uh, they're, they are definitely interesting. They are compiled from the field notes from the actual official uh, field surveys that were performed. And so what we're looking at, we're going we're gonna to look at three different plots in this video. What we're looking at here is the sample plot that comes in the 2009 uh, BLM survey manual. And uh, the reason I'm looking at this first is because this is best case scenario. Um, you're you're going to see that most of our plats uh, aren't this nice. <laughs> they don't they don't look quite like this. Um, so if you see a plat like this, this is kind of best case scenario. Um, and I, and I'll you know why why is it best case scenario? Um, you know we've got we got bearings and distances here and all our lines and um, you know this is some pretty clean drafting. It's, um, you know, it's, it's computer generated uh, text that's easy to read. So this is a, this is a pretty, good, pretty good survey. This is what I would, certainly what I would call a modern uh, township plat. Um, now this is a hypothetical township in Montana. So this doesn't actually exist, it's just an example. But if you watch my other videos, you can see we've got our six mile by six mile six mile by six mile grid here of our sections, right? Starting in number one here, as the ox plows all the way down, okay, to section 36. Now, we have some funky things going on in here. Um, so, uh, you can see up here these little squares along this north boundary of the township and then down this east boundary of, let's see, is that, that's west boundary of the township. Those are what we call government lots. Um, government lots are kind of special parcels in the public land survey system that are always created along the north boundary and west boundary of the townships. And you can zoom, we can zoom in here and see how they're numbered. Okay, one, two, three, four. So those are government lots. Um, I need to do another video where I where I talk about the difference between an aliquot aliquot part and a government lot. So I'll try and remember to do that. Uh, but let's look at the other information that, that's on the township plat here. So we, we can just start, we'll start up here with section one. Um, you can see there's a bearing and distance here on the four sides of the section. Okay, so this is due north 80 chains. This is north 89, 57, 80 chains. North 001 west, 80 chains. North 89, 57, west, 80 chains. It gives us the acreage here. That's 160 acres, 80 acres. Tells us the section is 640 acres. Tells us the section one. Okay, so that's that's the basic information that is put on the plat. You can see it's got these smaller distances here. Okay, if if you see a distance without parentheses, that's a regular distance that was actually run on the ground. If if they're in parentheses like these 20 chains here, those are called parenthetical distances. Those are calculated. They weren't actually run on the ground. Okay. Um, let's see what else do I want to show you. One thing you will notice is not on the township plat um, is a description of the monuments that they set. So they set monuments at the section corners, the four corners of the section, and at the court four quarter corners. Okay, um, and we don't know what what's there. So that's something that trips um, new surveyors up a little bit. Um, it's not like another survey map where they show the monuments. So if you want to know what monuments were set, you have to pull the field notes. That's how you find out what monuments were set. Although you will notice here they do have some they do have some annotations that there's some witness corners set. Okay, the other thing you'll notice is um, there are some major geographic or topographic features that will be shown on the township plat. So we've got a highway here. We've got the Yellowstone River coming through here. Uh, those are typically plotted from uh, the field notes. So as the GLO surveyor ran these lines wherever he crossed a ridge or a road or a river, he would note that, put that in the notes, and then, and then the, the drafter of the plat would use that to draft the plat. I suspect on more modern plats, those, those things, on a more modern plat like this, those things are added from aerial photography. So for example, we've got this railroad and telephone line here. 
but in the old days they were they were plotted from the notes and we're, we're going to look at an example of that um, you can see here they've got a control monument noted um, so this gives you a rough idea of, of what you're dealing with in the township uh, it is a graphical map of the survey okay and this is a legally controlling document so the information on the township plat is very important now I, I told you a little bit about some of that other funkiness so we've got a rancho here you can see it's kind of a, what we call an irregular survey, which means we lot around it. We'll, 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 I'll try and remember to talk about that. I need to do a, a video on irregular surveys. Uh, we've got a lake here that got meandered, and so they lot around the lake. You can see these are lot numbers around the lake. Okay, they also, the Yellowstone River was meandered. It's a big river. They lot it around the river. All right, so there are some lots showing up here that wouldn't show up in a pure standard section because we've got the land grant and the lake. You can also see up here they lotted around some mineral surveys. Um, this is a particularly complicated plat because they wanted to show examples of all those things in a single plat in the manual. I will tell you in California we get township plats that have all of this fun stuff. So we get township plats with mineral surveys, meandered rivers, land grants, and lakes. So um, this is pretty. This is a pretty complicated township plat, but we do get this kind of stuff in California and Nevada. Okay, so this is the kind of ideal best case scenario. If you if you pull a township plat and it looks like this, you're 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 in good shape. Okay, that is not what most township plats in California look like. So let's go ahead and look at an actual township plat that comes from California. So what I did is I went ahead and pulled the township plat for my house where I live in Stockton. And I downloaded it as a, as a J, GeoJPEG, a, J, a JP2 file from the BLM. Sometimes your PDF download doesn't work. So here's what an actual township plat looks like. This is an older township plat, as most of ours in California are. Now right away, you'll, you'll notice some, some things about this plat. Um, so we've got the Spanish land grant here. This is the Rancho Campo de los Franceses, or Camp of the French, French Camp. It's also called the Weber Grant. So my house is actually somewhere over here in the Spanish land grant. Okay, Spanish land grants were not included in the public land survey system. This Spanish land grant is a little unique in that on its the Weber Grant on its east, north, and south boundary follows the actual public land survey system grid. Most land grants do not do that. They are what we call irregular. So this part of the of the Weber grant is regular. It lays out on the on the public land survey system grid. So you can see we've got a land grant here. Now, if you'll notice, when you come in and zoom in on the sections, um, there's a lot of stuff that we don't see here that we saw on the other plot. So we've got some distances here in chains, but there's no bearings, um, and it, it it and it you know it just looks a little. It's just there's just not as much info. It's a little more sparse now. It's hard to see, but if you zoom in here, these are lotted. So he's got the lot numbers in the areas. Um, but you, you don't have the bearings. And you don't have the, the half distances to the quarter corners. So you'd have to go actually get the notes. <clears throat> now, he does show you that there were some posts set on the corner of the of the township boundary. So he, he has shown those posts. And then you can see there are some geographic features plotted here from the field notes. So he's got a slough here. He's got sloughs. He's got a fence. This is uh, Hogan's Road to Mariposa. If you're familiar with this part of California, this is actually Mariposa Road. It's the road that goes down to Mariposa, so it was there. And I don't know when this plot was done. 1864. That road was already in. Uh, let's see. We got some houses up here that are called out in the field notes. Here's another slough. So this is a this is a flat area. You can see there were a lot of sloughs, but there is some development here already in 1860, right? There's another house there. It looks like there was some some forest here along this line of the township. I think that's what he's trying to show there. <clears throat> now down here you can see it gives you a little timetable. I didn't look at that on the sample plat, but it shows you when this stuff was surveyed. So the south boundary was surveyed by R. W. Norris in 1851. The other township lines were surveyed by R.W. Norris in 1853, two years later. Um, the boundaries of lot number 37, so that's the rancho. So they surveyed the rancho boundary in 1858. And you can see it, it followed the, the grid, right? Because the township boundaries went in first before the land grant. 
and then the section lines were surveyed by H.P. Handy in 1864. And he even tells you how much he surveyed here. He surveyed 18 miles. Okay, so this is an older township plat. It's pretty common for here in, the, in what we call the Central Valley of California. This is what most of them look like. Um, not a lot of information on them. Not a lot of topo calls. This land has been cultivated for almost 200 years, 150, 175 years. Uh, most of the monuments they set out here were mounds and posts. Those are gone. Um, so you're typically not finding evidence of the original topo calls or the original monument or accessories when you're doing these kinds of surveys. You're relying on surveys that have been done since then that were not done by the by the GLO or the BLM. Okay, so this is, an, this is a nasty plat. Um, there's not a lot here. This, these are hard to survey. Um, I have a few times or several times done surveys in the valley uh, where there's not modern, more modern surveys and you're having to try and go back in and find, uh, figure out where some of these original quarter corners or section corners are, are based off just what you have in the plat and the notes and it's tough. It, it's, it's really tough. Um, sometimes you can go five, six, ten miles and not find good evidence of a corner. So it can be, it can be a challenge. It's a lesson I've learned the hard way. Okay, let's look at a different plat. This is going to be a mountain plat. And I've actually got a couple of them, so let me pull those in here. They're of the same township. So we're going to start with this, this one first. This is the older one. So this is over on Mono Lake on the east side of California, not far from Nevada. And so you can see in here they meandered Mono Lake, right? They lotted up against the lake just like we saw on the sample township plat. Now there's a little more information on here than there was on the plat in the valley, but still not a ton, right? No bearings. There are a few topo calls, so they plotted the creek in here. He's shown some like ridges and, and uh, you know, tops of ridges. There's a ravine here. I'm not sure what these are. I'd have to look at the notes. They might be gullies or swales. Um, now, this big blank area over here is mountainous, so they didn't survey. When they originally came in and did these surveys, they would always survey the valuable agricultural land first. So they're surveying down here in the valley along Mono Lake. They didn't survey the mountains. Now what they did is they come in, they came in and they and they did what we call completion survey. They came in and finished the township. So that is this survey. So you can see now they're surveying the rest of this that was up in the mountains. Okay, so you can you can see they've added that information here, and this is actually color coded, right? You can see again they've got topo calls. They've, this is kind of cool. It's kind of like a watercolor. I haven't seen that on a plat. Uh, usually they're hand sketched contours, but they they did some shading here. Um, so you can see some creeks and some ridges. We've got the section the, the the tier of lots along this West Township boundary. Um, now they still didn't survey this. Uh, now, why didn't they survey it? Uh, it's really rough mountains, and there's not a lot of timber, and you can't grow anything on it. So back when they were doing this, they were worried about timber or, or agriculture. Agriculture. This wasn't worth surveying. Okay, and if you look down here, you can see it'll tell you when this was surveyed. So that first survey we looked at was by Hanson in 1879. Let's see. Nope, sorry, 1856 by Schmidt, Von Schmidt, who did some of the California-Nevada boundary, then Hansen came in to finish up. Okay, so this is what a mountain township plat looks like. Again, you got to get to the notes, right, to figure out what monuments were set. So, All right, guys, there you go. Crash course through T three township plats, the sample in the BLM manual, a valley plat, and a mountain plat here from California. Uh, hopefully hopefully that will help you guys get a little, a little familiar with, with the GLO township plats.